welcome back in this video i will begin with defining link node and host these are some of the most fundamental entities in computer networks scalability is a core concept of this course i will define a scalability and illustrate the concept with an example Finally, I will introduce circuit switching and packet switching. By the end of this video, you will know these terminologies. You would know what is a scalability. You would know what is a packet. And you would know what are circuit and packet switching. Link is a physical medium that connects two endpoints. Examples of link are copper wire, fiber optic cable and wireless links. A link that connects exactly two endpoints is called point to point link. And links that can be shared by more than two endpoints are called multi-access link. These links are also called broadcast link. Here is an example of a point to point link. This wire is connecting these two laptops. Here is an example of a multi-axis word link. So in this case, this link is being shared by several computers. Wireless links are multi-axis. So this Wi-Fi access point is connected to this tablet, laptop and desktop. It's also connected to this printer and desktop by point to point links. Address is an identifier that is assigned to an endpoint. IP address is an example of address. We call any addressable device connected to network a node. Computers, servers, printers, routers, switches, modems, all of these can be nodes. However, we reserve the term host for those nodes that are not providing networking functionality exclusively. In other words, nodes that provide only networking functionality are not hosts. For example, modems, switches, routers are not hosts. All hosts are nodes, but some nodes are not hosts. In this example, this modem, Wi-Fi access point, tablet, laptop, desktop, printer, and this other desktop, these are all nodes. <clears throat> on the other hand only this tablet this laptop desktop printer and this other desktop are hosts modem and this Wi-Fi access point these are not hosts Here is a definition of a scalability. A system is called a scalable if number one, it can grow to arbitrarily large size. And number two, the cost of growth does not depend on its size. In other words, a scalable system can accommodate more demand by adding resources where the amount of added resources don't grow with the size of the system. Note that it is possible that a system be a scalable in certain aspects but not be a scalable in some other aspects. For example, a system may add arbitrarily large number of users in one geographical area, a small one, but may not be able to be expanded to a larger geographical area. And we will see one illustration of this. Here is an example that illustrates the concept of scalability. 
I'm using this example of telephone network because our next topic is circuit switching. In these examples, you can very well replace telephones with computers. Suppose you are given these five telephones and you are asked to connect them so that you have full connectivity. That is, from each telephone you can dial any other telephone. One possibility is to connect each pair by a point to point link. The problem with this idea is that one needs n choose two cables. In our example of five telephone connections, we require 10 cables for direct links. And if we are given uh, just 50 telephones, the number of cables would grow to more than 1000. Adding each new point requires to add n minus 1 cables, right? So therefore, adding nth user means that we have to make n minus 1 connections. And therefore, the cost per user increases with the size of the network. And therefore, this solution is not scalable. A scalable alternative is to add a switch and connect these phones to the switch. The job of this switch is to connect the caller and callee links. This alternative reduces the number of cables from n choose 2 to just n cables. Now adding a new user requires connecting only one cable to the switch. And new users do not need to coordinate with any other user. Since the switch needs to connect incoming call request to the desired telephone. The telephones need to be assigned unique addresses. This was not a requirement in our previous design. This is a picture of the telephone switch that was installed in the first telephone exchange that became operational in 1878 in New Haven, Connecticut. This is a wooden board. Uh, in this switch, the connections were made by manually moving these levers. There is a nice video uh, of uh, showing this switch um, in operation on AT&T Archives channel on YouTube. Though our previous design, this one, is scalable in terms of adding users at a particular location, its need to be augmented further for scaling up geographically. To illustrate, consider this example of two telephone networks located in two towns. So let's call it Town X and this is network in town Y and people in town X can talk to people in town X and people in town Y can talk to people in town Y. Now suppose a user A in town X wants to talk to a user B in town Y then we have a problem. Shall we move the switch to this location in the middle and connect these phones to this switch like this. Clearly this would be impractical because the distances involved are large and we can't possibly grow this system geographically. So this was to illustrate that a system that is scalable along certain dimension may fail to scale along some other dimension. 
Both the telephone network and the internet are global networks. These networks are designed hierarchically to enable user as well as geographical scalability. In this figure, I have shown two levels of hierarchy. There are these layer 1 networks and a layer 2 network. So these are layer 1 networks. And then there are two more here. Then there is this layer 2 network. Traffic within the network is forwarded as before. Suppose H1 calls H3, then that call would go to this switch and then forward it to H3. However, the traffic that is destined to other networks is forwarded to a higher layer network or to a peer. For example, call from H2 to H5 is first handed over to a higher layer network which carries to the right layer 1 network and then this call is forwarded to the right recipient. You might have recalled our discussion of telephone network in the previous video. Circuit switching is a mechanism for connecting two nodes. It is used in telephone networks. Circuit switching involves these three steps. First, a dedicated path through the network is established. This path is called circuit. Then data transfer takes place until completion. And lastly, the circuit is terminated. For example, suppose H1 wants to talk to H5. Then this call request goes through nodes A, B, C, D to H5. If H5 is busy, then circuit is not established and H1 gets a busy signal. Otherwise, a path from H1 to H5 is established. After the circuit from H1 to H5 is established, H1 and H5 uh, complete the call. And as one of the users hangs up, the circuit is torn down. In circuit switching, once a circuit is established, the capacity allocated to the circuit is reserved for it until the circuit is terminated. This leads to the limitation that once a link's capacity is used up, new connections through it are blocked till one of the existing circuits on that link is terminated. In this diagram, suppose the link connecting these nodes A and B can carry a maximum of two voice calls at any given time. In the situation where H1 to H5 and H2 to H7 circuits have been established, H3 will remain blocked. If such a thing happens in telephone networks, one usually hears messages like all the lines on this route are busy, please try after some time. This limitation of circuit switching is undesirable in computer networks because in computer networks, transmissions are followed by long periods of silence. And in this case, circuit switching results in inefficient utilization of the network. Packet switching is an alternative to circuit switching for exchanging data. Packet is a structured bit sequence that has 
three broad sections header the payload data the message that is being transmitted and an optional trailer section packets have an upper limit on their size and therefore if the message that is being transmitted cannot be fit in this data section of one packet then the message is cut up into several pieces and then are transmitted sequentially paul buran and donald davis are credited with the invention of packet switching paul buran developed the design of a distributed packet switched network that can withstand nuclear attack his work was done during period of 5 years from uh, 1959 to 1964 at rand corporation in us donald davis at npl uk built the first packet switched network it was the work of donald davis that led to the use of packet switching in computer networks including the arponet his the person who coined the word packet switching actually paul buran had used the term store and forward network interestingly a company by the name of collins radio company had developed a similar concept uh, by the name of message switching uh, in their design there was no upper limit on this data section the company still survives as rockwell collins packets are forwarded from one node to another till the packet reaches its destination and it is the packet header that contains necessary information needed for forwarding it towards its destination here is an example of a packet header it's an ip version 4 header a header would contain several fields uh, labeled here as version for example ihl it's a ip header length tos type of service total length identification flags and so on and these fields would vary from protocol to protocol the numbers at the top indicate bit positions so the the field version spans uh, bit 0 through bit 3 this is a 4 bit field and then this header length spans from bit 4 to bit 7 it's another 4 bit field and so on on wire so suppose um this is a sender and this is a link it's going somewhere and time increases in this direction then the bits are sent in ascending order right so bit 0 followed by bit number 1 bit number 2 blah 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 up to bit number 31 and then after this um again from here bit number 32 again to bit number 61 and then um sorry 63 and then um, bit number 64 and so on like that so as you can see these bits 96 through 127 contain the source address that's the fourth byte of this packet header and then the fifth byte contains the destination address once a packet reaches an intermediate node that node would briefly store this packet in its internal memory before forwarding to the next node because it needs to examine the packet header and therefore these networks are also referred to as a store and forward networks how does packet switching compare to circuit switching 
the points in the favor of packet switching are that packet switching offers better network utilization since a packet uses link capacity only for the duration of its transmission once uh, a packet is transmitted another packet gets its turn and second data forwarding is done on a per packet basis in the event of node or link failure next packets can be routed via alternate path if such a path is available on the other hand for large data transfers circuit switching offers less overhead and lower delay since once a circuit is established entire data transfer can take place without interruption in the case of packet switching number one there is header and trailer overhead for every packet and number two nodes have to make forwarding decision for each packet and this costs time finally in the case of circuit switching the entire data transfer takes the same path and therefore end to end latency remains fixed in the case of packet switching as i said the forwarding decisions are made on a packet basis and therefore different packets although Uh, belonging to same message may take different paths and as a result they may even end up um, you know uh, reaching to the destination in uh, some random order and number 2 since packets are queued at nodes uh, before they are forwarded and therefore you know the time that it takes for a node to forward a packet would vary from a packet to packet and therefore end to end latency also varies here is a summary of this video a system is scalable if it can grow to arbitrary size and the cost of growth is independent of the size circuit switching establishes a circuit before starting data transfer packet is a structured bit sequence packets are stored before being forwarded and the forwarding information is contained in a packet's header here is some material for further reading you can read about paul brand's work on packet switching at rand's website uh, this is the url There is a nice Wikipedia article on packet switching that I highly recommend uh, reading. Finally, section one point two point two of Peterson's book is relevant to this video. Here is a short quiz for you. You might want to pause the video, read the quiz. and try answering it yourself before i discuss the solution in the next slide the correct options are a and d a is correct such links are called multi access or broadcast links option b is wrong actually the switched based design is scalable and direct connections are not option c is wrong uh, forwarding information is stored in header and not in payload option d is correct and that's all for this video see you next time